Hi, I'm Karen Bosick with Iron Sun Valley. I'm here with Chris Katke, who is the new head chef at the soon-to-be Sun Valley Culinary Institute. Chris comes to us with a rich history of all kinds of food endeavors and activities. Chris, welcome to Sun Valley. Thank you. It's um, a pleasure to be here. It's always oh. fun to come to Sun Valley. Uh -huh. I mean, if there's places to cook in the world, and I've cooked in a lot of places, this is pretty spectacular. You walk outside, you see the mountains, the trees. It's, mm -hmm. it's nice. Uh -huh. And it's a great community. Yeah. Tell me just a little bit about yourself, Chris. So I, um, I started cooking when I was really young. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those weird people, you know. When I was 12 years old, um, I was stressed out about what I was going to do for a living. Yeah, it, I said, I'm a little weird, yeah. <laughs> okay. And there was one moment in time, and I still know where I was. I can remember it like yesterday, and it just sort of came to me. I said, yeah, uh -huh. I want to be a chef. And um, had two paper routes at the time, went out, took the money, bought a, a really big book called The LaRousse Gastronomique, was reading it at night, didn't understand any of it, and uh, started cooking with my first chef when I was 13. French wow. chef, yeah. Wow. Yeah, you know, and then spent uh -huh. time in Europe, France, Switzerland, cooked uh -huh. in some of the great restaurants over there, pastry shops. Uh -huh. uh, came back to the U.S., worked in a number of places, always kind of in the high-end world of, uh -huh. of, of cooking. And um, was chef of a restaurant in Chicago, one of the top restaurants. And one day, got a phone call in the kitchen. And it says, you know, chef, there's a place called Kendall. Kendall College wants to talk mm -hmm. to you. Says, what? What is this? And he said, do you want to teach? So I decided I'll teach for two years, uh -huh. and that lasted 20. Wow. Yeah. So. Wow. And, and today you're going to teach us, I understand. I, I am going to do that. We're actually going to make a, a fun dish, um, which is lots of different things on a plate. So it's kind of a higher-end dish uh -huh. with some Asian-inspired ingredients mm, and some good. sort of forward flavors. But before we get to any of that, the first thing in cooking, aside from washing your hands, uh -huh. of course, is to cut up and prepare some of the basic ingredients. So that's mm -hmm. what we're going to do right now. And some of these ingredients are going to go into different preparations. Uh -huh. And at the school, we're going to do exactly this. We're going to be focusing on teaching cooking uh -huh. to two populations. So it's the professional population, people who want to become chefs one day. Uh -huh. And we have a really a brand new way of teaching, which is super exciting. And it's going to help out the restaurateurs here in Sun Valley. Uh -huh. And then the other side is we're going to be doing classes for people. Well, do you like to cook? Oh. Okay. <laughs> so people I just like, like you. <laughs> exactly. And, and really it's just to, to, we're going to offer a whole bunch of different classes, uh -huh. all different kinds, fun stuff. So for instance, do you know how to peel ginger? Uh, beat it with a spoon? <laughs> it was a giveaway with a spoon. I shouldn't, you know, that's like when you show the, the student, you know, the, the, the PowerPoint presentation uh -huh. and say, you know, what are the three things? And it's on the PowerPoint slide, uh -huh. right? No, but most people, when they look at a, at a, at a piece of ginger, they uh -huh. want to take a vegetable peeler or they uh -huh. want to uh -huh. cut uh -huh. it with a knife. That's but actually the fastest way is mm -hmm. like this. You take a spoon, you flip the spoon over, and you just I go did. like this. Oh, that's so cool. And ginger peels incredibly easy. Oh my just Gosh, I've like, been working so hard at it. Precisely, everybody <laughs> is. And, and you know, it's, learning to cook is a lot of things. I mean, learning to cook uh -huh. is learning about flavors, learning about how you put stuff together, how you cook stuff. Uh -huh. But it's also about some of the easy stuff, like this, like how you cut up a piece of ginger. Mm -hmm. So once you've peeled what I need, then very simply I can cut off what you need. Mm -hmm. And at that point, trim it up. And now this is one of the things that... It always looks, you know, so easy, right? Uh -huh. When we do this, we make all yeah. these little thin cuts like so. Mm -hmm. What we're gonna be doing, especially in the professional side of things, when you learn how to cook professionally, one of the first things you learn how to work with is a knife. Uh -huh. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, but you know, this is, this is the most important tool in, <laughs> in the kitchen. And so we teach our students how to cut uh -huh. safely and how to cut accurately, and of course, how to cut quickly. I know, I Just always like end up so. with more blood in my food than <laughs> anything else. So. Just don't tell the people who come over and eat, okay? That's, <laughs> okay. Just, that's always a, never, never a good thing. So, so basically what I've done here is just mince up some ginger. And this ginger is going to go into two things. We're going to make a sauce uh -huh. that is ginger in it. Mm -hmm. And I took a sweet potato yesterday and roasted it until it's just literally falling apart. It's like mush. And I'm going to turn that into puree mm -hmm. along with sauteed fresh ginger. Mm. Okay. Next one, 
public. A lot of people say, what do you do with this? You know, I was talking with, literally yesterday when uh -huh. I bought this, the, the woman at the checkout here in Sun Valley said, you know, I tried to cook with this once. <laughs> I, you know, I didn't know what to do with it. It's a little intimidating. So let me show you. This is really, really easy. Uh -huh. When you cut up a leek. And, and just for people, yes, yes. what is it? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about intimidating. That's right. Thank you very much. It is a leek. And, and okay. a leek is, is its own vegetable. Some people say it's a big green onion. Not true. Uh -huh. It's its own vegetable. And it has great flavor. The, the thing about the anatomy of a leek is that, obviously, we don't want all these guys down uh -huh. here. But you also don't want to cook with these really dark leaves up oh, here. Okay. And so there's a little trick to this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just cut off the bare minimum, like so. And then, watch this. What we're going to do is we're going to cut off a leaf at a time. You just take a paring knife and sort of okay. make a cut. And you cut right where the mm -hmm. dark green meets the white. So uh -huh. right in there, sort of the light green. And you just give it a cut and turn the leek, uh -huh. just like this. Uh -huh. And you work your way right up the uh -huh. leek, just like so. And once you get, you know, again, a little bit of practice, you get a little bit fast at uh -huh. it. And there we go. Now the uh -huh. leek is ready to go, except there's a problem with this vegetable. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you see right there? See all that stuff in there? Oh, this is going to be a good one. Look at that. Oh. Oh, look at that. See all the dirt inside of there? Yeah. And the problem with the leek is that the dirt gets inside each, uh -huh. of the, each of the little leaves. So what you have to do is you have to slice it down the middle. And then you go under running water. And you sort of put the leek up this way with the water mm -hmm. running into the leek. And open it up like this so that the water can get in mm -hmm. and clean all that mud and dirt. Mm -hmm. Have you cooked with a leek before? No. <laughs> Are you going to cook know with a leek after today? That's my big question. <laughs> so I have to hear back yeah, from you. Yeah, I'm ready you. to sign up for cooking class. <laughs> and we're going to do lots of stuff, fun stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, Italian cooking, pizza, mm -hmm. French cooking, pastries, chocolate, creme brulee. Oh. Do we have time for one more? Can I do a little onion here? OK. All right. So onion. this is another thing. How many people cook with onion? Do you cook with onion? I do cook with okay. onion. All the time? Yeah. Pretty frequently, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And in restaurants, we cook with onions constantly. Mm -hmm. So if you want to dice an onion, I took this onion, and I actually so it just fell apart. I'm going to put it back together. There we go. And basically, there's two sides to the onion. I cut it in half. And you have the part over here, which uh -huh. is what comes out of the ground, right? Uh -huh. Then you have the root end over on this side. And so what we're going to do is, first of all, I've cut it in half. I'm going to just mm -hmm. trim a little of both ends, just a mm -hmm. tiny bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel it. Fastest way to peel an onion is with a paring knife. Put it right underneath like this and just pull back. And a lot of people are, are yeah, exactly. It's very, very easy. Mm -hmm. Done. Very easy. Uh -huh. Trim a little of the part that it's maybe a little less than beautiful. And then, the way that we're going to cut this up, remember there's two sides. Uh -huh. So the root end is over here. The, the trick is that the, what you always remember, root end goes to your pinky. Mm -hmm. That's the way it works. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our knife. Now, do you see what I just did with the onion? This, see, cooking is made up of all these little things. Uh -huh. All right, and you know, our students, both professionally and the folks just like you who want to cook some more, you're going to learn these tricks. Did you see what happened? I started with the onion in the middle, and then I slid it over here. And I do that on purpose, because now I'm going to make some cuts, and my hand is underneath the table. It's below the surface of the table. If it's here, it doesn't work. Aha, slide it over this way, and I'm going to put my hand on top of the onion. Uh -huh. Safety is critically important, always on the uh -huh. onion. And I'm going to make a couple cuts, just okay. like so. Now notice, I stop there. Yeah. The knife uh -huh. is not cutting all the way through. Mm -hmm. And that is the trick. That's why we have the root end here, because the root end mm -hmm. holds the onion mm -hmm. together. OK, like so. Make one more. And then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make some cuts straight down. Now, if you notice, I'm holding my hand in a very specific way right. here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's something else we're going to learn, because that is the trick for how chefs cut fast and accurately and safely. So like so, mm -hmm, make mm -hmm. a few cuts. And then I turn the onion one more time. And my onion dices perfectly. Make it look so easy. <laughs> Well, and I, no blood. So, <laughs> and no blood. <laughs> blood when you're filming is always a really bad idea. <laughs> you know, the thing is, is that 
To learn how to do this well, it's two uh -huh. things. It's learning the technique. We teach the technique, and then it's practice. Uh -huh. It's just doing it over and over again. For our, our students who hope to be professionals one day, there's going to be a lot of practice. Uh -huh. our, the kitchen classes for them are very intensive classes because they have to learn how to be fast. And for the folks like yourself, uh -huh. who just want to like, learn how to do this better, cook, have fun at home, well, you get to practice at home. How's that? Okay. And you come back and we have a test. I'm mm -hmm. just joking. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just a couple of the of the basic things that uh -huh. we're going to be using today, okay. and we'll be teaching at the school. Mm -hmm. So this sauce here is what we call a bear blanc. So and it's a sauce made by gently melting butter into a reduction of wine. In this case, we have wine and we have some ginger and some onions. And it takes a lot of butter. Let's take a look at our salmon over here. Let's see how this is doing. You want to do your bear blanc on really low heat. That's beautiful. Sort of see the crispiness of it. Now as the salmon cooks, I want to take that salmon, I'm going to baste it. So we really get the outside of that. Nice and beautiful. Okay, our Bear Blanc is done. We have over here sweet potatoes. And this sweet potato mixture is a puree with the ginger and the butter. And then I went and I put in some, some sesame oil into it, the sesame oil over here. Just I'm gonna put in a little bit more, just for flavor reasons. Richness, fat, and the sweet potato together is exceptional. To finish our sauce, I'm going to take some chopped up kimchi. I'm going to mix that into our bear blanc. It's going to make a kimchi bear blanc. Let that heat up a little bit. And now our salmon is just about done. You can tell how done it is by just either pressing on the top or giving it a little squeeze on the side. I'm going to baste it some more with this brown butter. You can see the outside of that as it crisps it. Oof, that is gonna be mm -mm, delicious. A little bit more. And our bok choy is ready, our quinoa is ready, and we are now ready to plate it up. Let's take our salmon out of the pan and let's plate it up. We now have our dish ready to go. Lots of different elements on that mm -hmm. dish. We have the soft, sweet ginger and the sweet mm -hmm. potato, the sauce, the richness, and still that sort of bite of the kimchi, the quinoa, our salmon, that little salad on top, mm -hmm. and a piece of bok choy. I bet that is just Boasting with flavor. It is, and it goes really well with some white wine. So can you pour oh, a couple glasses? Because of course. you know, we have to have some white wine to go with our with our salmon. Perfect. Look at that. Excellent. And so this is the kind of food uh -huh. that we'll be teaching. Oh my gosh. And all the techniques behind it. Because remember, each one of these ingredients has something different about it. Uh -huh. Each one of the ingredients has something special uh -huh. and you have to learn that. It's so. amazing what I've learned in just the space of 15 minutes. Sign me up. <laughs> All right, you are signed up for the first salmon cooking class. How's that? Okay. So grab your glass and uh, we'll do one of these. So the well, thank Sun, you, Sun Chris Valley Jeff. Culinary Institute. And welcome to Sun Valley and I hope you enjoy it as much as the rest of us do. You know, so. I'm having a blast. It's mm -hmm. amazing. And the people here are incredible. Talk mm -hmm. about community. And this will be a, a culinary institute for the community. Oh, great. Great. So, Can't wait. Cheers. Can't wait. I'm an Idahoan, a mother, and a person with a disability. And I love Idaho. When I was injured as a young person, I decided to thrive, not just survive. And I want Idaho families to thrive, too. 
I am passionate about making quality public education a top priority for our kids' futures. As someone with a spinal cord injury, I know that healthcare is too expensive. It's time for the legislature to take action to guarantee access to affordable, high quality health care for all Idahoans. I'm Muffy Davis, and I'm running for Idaho State House to find solutions for Idaho families. And I ask for your vote on November 6th. Paid for by Muffy for Idaho, Missy Shirts, Treasurer. I'm Derek Agnew, General Manager of Zenergy Health Club and Spa, and I want to take you inside and show you what we've done with our new Pivot Studio, which is going to blow you away. The therapists tell me that Pivot really is the game changer. It fills that final gap that we were missing at Zenergy, things they could not do in our main gym. The recent addition of the Pivot Studio has meant wonders to me as a physical therapist. I can now take care of the most vulnerable post-operative patient, but now I can include programming that challenges the most elite athlete. In 1975, when I was 13 years old, I moved to the Wood River Valley with my parents. We currently have a lack of incentive for any new development to come into our area. We need to correct this trend and reverse it. Unfortunately, it's been going on for far too long. We need to retain those good people who feel forced out, and we need to retain our young adults who want to remain in this valley. We need to change. I hope to be that change. I have never been a very political person, and I get frustrated by the slow pace at which government runs. I am more of a let's get it done person. I believe that service to my community is a privilege and not a career. I believe in showing up to fulfill the obligation of that job. I believe in making informed and thoughtful decisions for the best outcome for the people of Blaine County. If I am fortunate enough for you to choose me to be your next South County Commissioner, I can promise you that I will get in there, roll up my sleeves, and do my absolute best for the people of Blaine County. Paid for by Deborah Hall for Blaine County Commissioner, Julie Wells Hoskins, Treasurer.